Hello, I'm Connie Chamberlain, content editor here at Harper's Bazaar Arabia. Welcome back to our weekly current trending podcast. This week, we continue our conversation on the hot topic of influencers with Mohammed Sultan and Diala Maki. Due to the overwhelming feedback, we have invited Mohammed Ali Abdullah and Ada Al Basadi from the social media team at Dubai Tourism to dissect who, how, and why they use influencers for the benefit of Dubai's economy. Hi, and welcome back to Currently Trending from Harper's Bazaar Arabia. I am Mohammed Al Habtour, and today I have with me media journalist and producer. Diala Mekki, if you haven't listened to our episode last week, please click on the button or on the episode <laughs> above this one so that you can understand where we're going with our conversations today. So by starting, I'd like to thank all of our listeners from last week that have tuned in onto the debate and conversation and dialogue that me and Diala had regarding influencers. So let's address the topic from and pick up where we left off. Um, yeah, last week, Diala. I'm so happy to uh, to be here again. And as you can see, I have the influenza. <laughs> It's fine to get uh, the that. trending it's only, it's, influenza it's, it's, now. It's, it's only going to boost your immune and actually make yes. you stronger. I'm when, I'm one of those um, journalists that once I'm on TV or I have a mic in front of me, I get this energy and my producer is sitting here and she knows that I don't know where I get this from. But I want to thank you again for including me in last week's podcast and Harper's Bazaar. And honestly, I did not expect um, this amazing uh, feedback uh, that I got the moment I shared the podcast. And I was happy enough that most of it if not all of it was extra positive. Now we will read the comments of our viewers because at the end of the day, we are doing this for them. Uh, some private DM messages, we are going to, of course, respect the names of the people that um, absolutely, send absolutely. those messages. But I also want to say that a lot of other media publications caught up and started the trend, which means, I like you said... We can, once two people from the community can start a conversation, a positive conversation, change can and will happen. So I'm going to leave the floor to you now. I would like to know what your uh, your uh, followers had to say. This a very important matter. Clearly, we gauged in um, on a topic that really mattered and... Uh, you know what, uh, Diala, from the audience that I had, most of them responded by saying, you and Diala are saying what everyone else is thinking. So to put more light onto the matter, some of the things that I've received from my audience were, um, influencer is basically the new way of promoting and using a, a less in, or an inexpensive way of promoting a product. So the mainstream media right now is to use these um, influencers to to basically showcase their product in return for money that is not in a publication or a respected media outlet. There is a cut down in budgets. We have to agree on that. That well, there makes is a big, there is a, a difference there is, as well. There is an economical issue. I'm assuming. Yes. Yeah. But big still, one. you know what? Uh, if there are cut downs in budgets and things are getting. Um, cheaper i'm assuming also these media outlets will go will give people discounts on on their advertising exactly. platforms exactly um someone said great podcast this bubble is about to burst <laughs> the insanity cannot continue and it's the brands themselves who must take full responsibility and be made accountable for what can only be described as a cluster circus the majority of these people do not have influence they are not models they have an Instagram account, and that is it. So it is a digital era. We are living a digital era. We have to respect that, of course. But there are things that need to be done the ethical and the right way. I will read a few comments from mine, and then you can continue with yours Absolutely. to see you know, where we are. 
um, I had um, a follower that said, by the way, most of these followers did not follow me follow me before, which is quite amazing, you know. One of these um, followers said, great podcast. Hope you continue the conversation. There are so many aspects to the influencer phenomenon. So far, you've focused mostly on those who produce no content and only post paid ads. There are also those who produce decent content, which we will do, obviously, but also post paid ads and do not disclose them, which means, again, um, when you post uh, things as a part of an advertisement and you do not announce it. This is one of, a, of the unethical ways about Instagram. I have yet to, I have yet to see the pay ad hashtag. So let's hope enforcement starts soon. This is what she's this saying. This is what the government of the United yeah. Arab Emirates is trying to control at the moment. Mm -hmm. the I think implementation should happen as of effective and immediate. Yeah. But it also is, the brands are responsible for yeah. this. Those with zero content will be the first to lose their audience, she's saying. Or at least I hope that their followers have <laughs> half a brain and stop following them. I'm not sure I have that much confidence in people, though. I have seen some zombie followers do nasty things to people who dare to speak out against their beloved influencer, which is, again, um, falls into the category of being bullied on social media. They harass the commenter, post personal details, hack their accounts, etc. Um, I'm going to read one more uh, comment, but... Um, Just to tap on this point, I have been personally been attempted to, uh, uh, my account was um, under a hack attempt a few times this week. And and, and you get the notification, And I obviously. get the notification. And Why do you think that happened, Diana? It's It's an army of influencers and their followers, zombie followers. That, Can you prove that? Uh, if you get an expert in social media, yes, we can uh, we can definitely prove that. Well, there is laws against that at the moment, as you are aware, um, here in the United Arab Emirates, that protects um, each individual that holds any sort definitely. of uh, social media accounts. Uh, some people said they disrespect our minds. As um, as simple as that, we may we may see hundreds of stories of unboxing goods in the same day because brands are sending them stuff to ev sending the same stuff to everyone and then we read something along the fact that influencers are being selected now to spread out a negative impact on their followers mm -hmm. and sometimes maybe our viewers can get um confused too because um Um, as a way to support one of the influencers that I actually like, and her name is Asya, she just, uh, you know, started her um, uh, online business when it comes to skincare, Korean skin skincare that has become very popular, especially in the Arab world in the last few years. As a way to support her business, I bought a few things from her platform just, you know, to tell her, you know, it's uh, good on you, you're using your well, fame on supporting. social media to create a business um, out of it. So I, I received a box and I was, you know, checking of, on how to use this uh, specific um, product. product or beauty uh, skincare product. And I got a comment from uh, one of my followers saying, why are you promoting different products every day? Um, and I had to tell my uh, follower that this was not paid. I actually paid for the product to support somebody on social media that I thought was doing a great thing by, you know, um, um, by actually doing a business. So and not everything that we do show necessarily means that we're advertising no, a brand. No, I, I, not in my at case, all. most of the time I am really just grateful that some brands do acknowledge me and send me these gifts. And there's nothing wrong to share on a product that actually works mm. for me. Um, as I said, I use my platform to share things that I enjoy, pictures of my life, things that interest me. And it falls, un unfortunately for me, I mean, it falls under a category that is related to that lifestyle and luxury world that um, is, uh, is going out of control in this day and age. Uh, having said that, Diala, I would like to hear some more comments from you before we move on to a topic that I would like to 
Okay, Explain. this was really, really interesting. It was from somebody that works uh, in a brand, in a beauty brand. She said, when I work backstage, I see these influencers, majority of them on New York Fashion Week streets shows, backstage restaurant. They are stealing the spots that should be given to real fashion and art world people. Most of the time, all they care about is to pout in selfies in crazy street style outfits, which they plan for weeks and weeks before the event. They don't even care about their followers, no value in the material they they present, and they don't even have a precious message to the world, which is What something... What is she trying to say? Can you which, explain it to our audience? Which is something I, um, I talked about last week. Mm -hmm. When uh, journalists, fashion journalists go to backstages, their job is to report the trends because beauty and fashion trends generally start in fashion weeks and off the runways. Mm -hmm. So what these beauty uh, and fashion bloggers do is they want to be part of this bubble, this fashion world. Which All is they, about to burst from my which understanding. Is, yes. Yeah. All they do is they use the hashtag of uh, the, the trending fashion weeks to gain more followers. Sometimes they're uh, they're even styled in the in the most outrageous way to gain attention. Um, they watch the shows. They don't cover the shows. They don't talk about the shows, and they take the place of a lot of um, people that are specialized in the industry. As you know, PR. Um, specialists get up to six or seven seats per industry uh, during per fashion region. per region I mean uh, for a specific brand so if more and more of these people are surfacing less and less content creators and people of actual value would want to attend these fashion weeks I was one of them honestly I sometimes I got to a point where I was like I don't even know what I'm doing here anymore One of our um, listeners sent an email to Harper's Bazaar Arabia, and he wanted us to basically address the difference between what an ambassador is and what an influencer is. It, because according to him, his understanding is the two shake hands with each other, which in some certain context I agree with. They might. He emphasized on specifically my, uh, my being... Um, an ambassador or let's say a friend of a brand with my role at Piaget. And I just wanted to uh, explain the difference between an ambassador and an influencer is the ambassador usually is trained under certain company guidelines of a brand that they work with to represent. This categorizes everything in terms of product, education, history, down to the code of the products that they're representing. And by no circumstances are you ever allowed to emphasize what the brand stands for in any way besides what is presented to you from the actual reps of that brand. And having said that, it's not an easy task either. Going through these selections and being honored to have an ambassadorial role is also a journey of its own, of responsibilities that you need to constantly, constantly be aware of in terms of your surrounding, how you present the brand on yourself, and the reason that you are representing the brand. Whereas uh, with influencers, <laughs> yeah. influencers have their own guidelines. That is the complete difference. When they're influencing something, um, they are representing what their guidelines are and not what the brand expects from them. Uh, two weeks ago, His, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum um, gave uh, awards to digital media personalities in different sectors okay. in the government and the entertainment industry, um, in economy, uh, in is, media. Is this to call them influential or is no, it no. just to award them as personalities? No, in they were actually digital influencers. And guess what is his perception? of digital influencers. Please explain to the audience here because this is the first time I would be hearing this. From the arts category, Hussein al-Jasmi. Musician, we're very familiar about that. Mm -hmm. Hussein al-Jasmi is an influencer. He, he is one of the top Khaliji singers that have put the name and represented the, represented the Khaliji music in the most um, respectful, 
uh, way ever. He is, if you today, if you ask, if you think about a Khaliji singer, the first name that pops to your head is Hussein Al Jasmi, among many others, because he was very versatile. He was able to tap into different kinds of music, and he was a success story. Okay. Hussein Al Jasmi was a success story. Anyone else? Um, from from the tolerance, positivity, and tolerance category, we had Yasser Harib author and media person. From the sports category, we had Yasser Al-Kahtani, who is a football player, Saudi football player. From the tourism category, we had Emirates Airlines. From okay, the talking. health category, we had Dr. Muhammad Asafi. So all of these, but these are influencers. With careers. With careers. Yes, that's so the difference. So these are the influencers. Bring to everyone's attention mm. this amazing account that came through a discussion that I had with um, a relative of mine recently, out of the blue. He said to me, pull up this young lady's account. Her name is Sara Abu Khair. And look at her NASA story. So I go through her story. And it's on her highlights. I will share this with you um, right after I announce this podcast. Uh, she has a highlight dedicated to NASA where she reaches out to NASA, United States of America, to tell them that she wants to create the biggest barbecue in the world under a shooting rocket, utilizing the fire that explodes from behind the rocket. <coughs> Mind you, I'm going... Still laughing about that. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, I instantly thought this is insane. But at one point, would it I actually saw, work? Could it work? Because I saw NASA respond to her. After NASA responded to her, she was basically BuzzFeed contacted her. The, the, you know, the Ellen, Ellen, De, Ellen DeGeneres no, show wanted to invite her to the talk show. that made me so sad, actually, she that became, Ellen did that. <laughs> she became an instant sensation on social media. But in a matter in, of days. In a matter of days. It took her two weeks to do this exercise or this experiment. A lot of media outlets reached out to her, Diala. A lot of PR firms sent her gifts. A lot of people wanted to interview with her and get the scoop of the story. And this story was going on. On her highlight, she gained overnight around approximately 30,000 followers. I went online to search about some articles on her and I saw raving reviews. Only to the end of that NASA story, she claims that all of it was a lie. And it just shows you that people who lack research and education and doing the right risk management and cross-check on any individual that comes across on social media, it just shows you that people... Are, are, are just so fascinated without doing any of these things that are important we, and relevant. We, to me, this girl gaining 30,000 followers overnight. As a genius. And she's a genius. <laughs> to me, the smart way of thinking to prove to the world of how unintelligent so many people in these journalistic uh, media uh, outlets, PR, you know, giving her the benefit of the doubt and trusting her mainly on her highlight and a story. And overnight, she's a success. Which makes you think... What am I doing wrong? Yes. And this girl, luckily, I mean, if she had carried on, she would probably have been on the Forbes list by now. But... I mean, <laughs> I wish she just, you know, stalled it for a little longer so she would have but got then a she few awards. It. And maybe in her acceptance speech, she and would she... have just said, you know what, she this said, is all way, a social experiment. <laughs> and it's fake news. None of this has happened. I mean, hey, fake news has, has always been it. there, but the, this experiment it is... It was genius. A genius experiment. It was a genius experiment, and it just shows you how people can become influencers overnight. Fake it until you make it, oh, and no. you are a winner this day. For a very short period of time, and that is. That's it's what true, I believe. But it is true, but it is very alarming, and it is dangerous, and it is scary because... Anyone can fake anything nowadays. They can start an entire new life story. Their own Which a lot of people <laughs> did because in a city like Dubai, in, in a new city like Dubai, a city of opportunities where a lot of people come here to start careers, a lot of people I know 
faked so many things about their backgrounds, and people seem to believe it. But you know, it, it, we are not here to uh, to uh, to fix the entire world. We are here to talk about a certain phenomenon that we are part of. Raise awareness. Help the young generation to differentiate between what is wrong and what is right, and at least education is key. Diana. Exactly. At least you know research, uh, research is key. <laughs> research. Read. Our next guests are from the tourism sector. Yes. And we're gonna discuss how using the right kind of. Um, uh, influencers or the right kind of journalists and critics may or may not enhance um, uh, the tourism of a specific city during festive seasons or during uh, a dead season and what are the strategies that the UAE government um, is doing in order to um, put Dubai uh, on the this- map. Uh, on the map in the spotlight not that it needs to but what are the main strategies that um, the Ministry of Tourism is doing through social media so here today we have with us Aida al Saidi and Mohammed Abdullah both from Dubai Tourism Authority and we will be covering with them obviously the topic that and I we have so have... many questions <laughs> for them as well our topic is again influencer and we raised a few questions on social media as well Um, asking people whether um, they would believe m- more in influencers or in credible journalists that have actually uh, the correct degrees. Critics, the correct critics, yes, basically. Yes, right, the correct critics that have degrees. So today in our studio we have Mohammed Abdullah from Dubai Tourism Authority who handles campaign management for the uh, Tourism Authority in Dubai. Uh, welcome, Hamad. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Hamad. It's a pleasure to be here. We are really excited to have you on board uh, amongst uh, amongst us. Um, as you are aware, we are tackling the topic of influencers in this day and age of the region and uh, comparing it from a global strategy. Diala has a few things that she would like to discuss with you. Following that, I would also like to throw in some questions. So let's uh, get started. <laughs> absolutely. But just before we do that, I just want to say that this has become a topic that I've been very passionate about in the last eight months. I know it's not a very long time, but since the start of my career, I've been working day in and day out with influencers mm. from all over the world. So I wouldn't consider myself an expert by any means, but at the same time, in recent months i have had a lot of um different experiences with influences from different countries amazing um you just said that you moved back recently to dubai um what kind of experience did you have prior moving back to dubai and how do you see the influencing scene different internationally than it is here in our region so i know this was mentioned like in the last podcast how the influencer movement has just recently blown up um before to be completely honest before i moved back i wasn't very much aware of the influencer movement and how it's been changing uh things especially in in, in various different industries fashion being one of them but since then uh, i have seen that it has become a good tool if used correctly but a very bad tool because of its over usage how are you strategically using the right kind of influencers from different regions how are you looking to utilizing the right people that uh, could be used to promote Dubai in specific and the United Arab Emirates in general so we use a very scientific method how uh, so scientific method. scientific it sounds really? very interesting I know. Uh, because we, we we need to also understand this me and Diala have been tackling this dialogue as you are yeah. aware for the past couple of weeks now so Now we finally know that there is a strategy. Okay, tell us, Explain please. Explain it to us and please, please also emphasize on great detail because our audience need to understand this. Okay. Okay, so let's just start from the top, right? When when brands, when uh, whatever they, they, they might be, whatever industry that they might be in, when they decide to take influencers, they really look at the pretty face or they look at the number of followers or they look at really top level things. But we from Dubai Tourism, we really deep dive into the influencer. 
Um, certain uh, scientific method, as, I'm, I, as I just mentioned, would be like not just looking at the number of followers, but looking at the breakdown of the followers. Where are they from? What kind of people are they? So we have very specific social media tools that really go all the way into the followers of the, of, of the uh, influencer. Meaning checking their background as well? Risk management and so on. Absolutely. So say, for example, if we have a Diwali event that we just recently yeah. have been working on, we will look at influencers that are from India, their followers are from India, that they are in a specific age group that would allow them to travel to Dubai. What kind of influencers do you look at? Are they travel bloggers? Lifestyle, fashion. Are they travel? Are they fashion? Because honestly speaking, um, last night uh, I was asking my followers um, to give me advice about uh, specific pages of travel bloggers. And I found the pages of travel bloggers much more exciting and interesting because they have beautiful pictures usually and they're sort of um, attractive. But what shocked me the most is the background of these uh, uh, travel bloggers. Most of them are photographers. They could be chefs. They could be people from within the hospitality industries that have opened a social media account and now they you know they are sort of taking advantage of their uh, e taking exactly. advantage of what they so are passionate about do you about. look at that when you are picking the right kind of influencers for specific times of the year absolutely so going back to the the broader conversation about influencers i would like most people categorize them in a certain way there's two types there are verified accounts and there are non-verified accounts but we go a step further we usually engage with influencers that are known for something else. They're either sports or they're lifestyle bloggers or they are travel. And they do this outside of social media as well a lot of the time. So they write constantly. This is one of their passions. Right. They haven't just become famous on social media. Okay. Because we, we realize that those kind of people, they have followers that, you know, like say, uh, for example, me, I'll just follow 100 accounts that I think look really cool. But most other people who have very dedicated niche following – they have people who are also passionate yeah. about the same things. <clears throat> I have, um, I have a, um, an example. During the summer, you know, we were talking to me. Months. Uh, during <laughs> the dead months. Um, um, like, I, like we were discussing earlier, uh, information that we get over Instagram is not necessarily the right kind of information. So I asked my, my followers uh, last night, uh, the percentage, who would they trust, a food blogger or a food critic that has an actual an actual bachelorette degree that is a certified, uh, that, is, uh, that has um, a degree in writing. 98% came, uh, a response from my followers that they go towards the critics, the basically. critics yeah. more than the followers. And it's an example that me and Muhammad talked about before you came. I applied it personally on a trip this summer when I wanted to choose two restaurants. The first one, I went to a credible uh, online source with a big uh, name, a journalist that I trust. And the experience was wonderful versus the food blogger that had amazing pictures, verified account. Everything looked so legit. Probably more followers than the Probably actual. Probably more followers. And my experience was horrible. And again, we asked our followers, word of mouth or paid influencer? 99% came word of mouth. 1% came influencer. What's your take on that? So I think absolutely even I, as a person who is very much in this industry, would still follow the food critic if I wanted to go somewhere myself. Amazing. But, but, okay, but the, sounds, this is very interesting. But here's the thing. Here's where it gets even more interesting. It's that we look for people who have an overlap. So they are food critics. They are food critics, but they are also influencers. So they've, they've, they've trans... They've, basically they transitioned adapted. or they've evolved mm. from being just a food critic to taking their food critic online so they on their, their Instagram channel. took their so platforms they to a step further. Exactly. exactly. What yes. we were talking about last yeah. week. What I find challenging is that how do you differentiate between the two and two? You look into their history. You look where they started from. You look at their credibility. You look at their qualifications. 
Muhammad, you um, had a discussion with me via Instagram actually just last week, where you said to me, um, you, you had know, a conversation behind my back, <laughs> <laughs> um, where you said to me that yes, you, but a lot of this day and age, uh, smartphone users will fall under the trap of Instagram. Can you please let our audience understand what you were meaning when you said? How do we change that mindset for people that okay tend to utilize Instagram or social media as a platforms source of information. as a source of information? I fell for it. I'm a journalist, and I fell for it. You so can from fall your for perspective it. and the domain that you are in, and the responsibilities that Dubai Tourism also needs to emphasize on. How do you explain to a nation or a region how to affiliate between the two? So I discussed this with you over the Instagram chat, um, just to have the Allah to be in the conversation as well and the listeners. So let's look at the mentality first. How did this happen? What happened was back in the day, people would read the newspaper, people would listen to the radio, people would watch TV. Nowadays, if you look at the age group of, I would say, early teens all the way to late teens, so the 12 to 18, even 25, up to 25. They don't look at those traditional media anymore. They're all on Instagram. They're all following accounts and they spend most of their time on Instagram. So this change has caused an overusage of these influencers. And what that has done effectively is completely change certain mindsets and perceptions into their head. How do we move away from this? Is that number one, through education, educating the, the younger generation that you have to you have to fall back mm. to what's real we're gonna start dancing here in the studio. <laughs> this is music to my ears actually See, i Thank want you to comment on that on before you continue before we lose this track of uh thought um i'm sure you're aware last year there was an incident with a very famous russian blogger where she was invited uh to come to dubai to uh, promote a specific hotel uh, the cultures and the traditions of these bloggers that come from different backgrounds do not necessarily, um, uh, they're not necessarily the same, like the, the traditions and the values that we live in here in the United Arab Emirates. So they were posting pictures that were indecent in hotels that are family oriented. Family oriented. So how do you regulate this kind of inappropriate content, especially when you're targeting regions such as Russia, such as Asia, that are big spenders in the United Arab Emirates? Absolutely. That's an excellent question. It's one of the first things that I had in my mind as well when I joined. And I later came to find out that every single influencer, regardless of which country they come from, obviously they come from their culture and their background and exactly. things work differently over here. We give them a very, very stringent set of guidelines. The, the Russian influencer that you are referring to, I know the incident, it did not come from Dubai Tourism. That mm -hmm. was a private event with a, with, a, with a different branch. I don't want to take their name, but that was nothing to do with but tourism advocacy. The hashtag my Dubai was used in that. Yes. See, we, we, we cannot control who uses the hashtag. I understand that. They are the, the ones we bring in that we tell them that, you know, if, just to have a tracking methodology behind their post to use the hashtag. Because it all kind of uh, gathers into one big bucket of UGC. And that's why we use the hashtag. But say if person X tomorrow decides to do something bad and use the My Dubai hashtag, that doesn't mean that Dubai tourism is, is advocating for that. To what extent is content key for you today um, as Dubai Tourism, producing high quality videos and photos other than just working with the appropriate influencers? It is super important. And that's why in our selection, we our main focus is after we have vetted their legitimacy, their history, what kind of content they've been posting for the last while, the next thing before we get them on board is look at their content because mm. content is everything. And, and even the ABC of production is one of the key important points as well. And we have an XTV uh, personality with us here. So we're going to talk about trans production. <laughs> How was she the transition for you, the Aida? Uh, from from being in media and, and you know, post, no, pre-digital era, 
we all grew up in Dubai and you know how it was like charming and then, you know, social media took over and you transitioned from media outlet, being in Dubai television to tourism. And how was the transition for you in this Ex-colleague, day Ex-colleague, <laughs> hello. <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe we ever met, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, I think one of the key points that we need to realize, though, is... You know, at different points of time, you might have some very specific trends, right? Uh, uh, you know, we, we were just, Mohammed and I were at an earlier session where we talked uh, about, you know, radio being the first um, kind of way to getting to people, right? Like passing on of knowledge or passing on of information, even the content creation part. But it took 72 years to actually reach 1 million users, whereby it only took five years um, via the smartphone to get to 1 million users. So you can see the transition of it doesn't matter what the platform is and it doesn't even matter what the mode of communication is. It actually, what you need to focus on is, are you an actual content creator? How you deliver it is really impendent on what it is exactly that you're creating, right? So just because somebody else, because today, in today's world, if we're going to define social media and Mohammed uh, um, touched upon, you know, uh, content creators. You walked in at the right time. At the right time, exactly. This is exactly <laughs> where Mohammed was cut off. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We were talking about content creation yeah. and how content creation and the rules and the ABC of production absolutely. should adapt with the changes of the industry. Absolutely. Just because we are on Instagram and YouTube, that doesn't mean we have to deliver lower quality content Absolutely. with Absolutely. a lesser meaningful message. Absolutely. And you so the coming content- from a TV background. Yeah, yeah. So absolutely. I mean, I mean, writing, really- writing and television as well, right? I mean, mm-hmm. journalism is my core, but if you think about it, you've got con- the actual content creators and then you've got the content consumers, right? Mm-hmm. Both of them need to be taken into consideration. Mm-hmm. And content creators, uh, for the people who tend to use social media on a on a heavy basis. I mean, we're not going to we're not going to throw some criticism on there, but creation of content is not getting someone to photograph you, <clears throat> not getting someone to style you and not getting someone to give you a quote and then you just use the platform yeah. to post I, I the piece a of content. For you. <laughs> I've seen a lot of influencers that came from Dubai Tourism Authority mm-hmm. where they need to obviously create footfall in the region, not that Dubai needs it. Yeah. But yes, we do. How do <laughs> we <laughs> always need it. We always think, need I the think, extra, maybe. I but. think I think Dubai has established itself on a global scale on many different aspects, yeah. Yeah. and no influencer is going to stand in for Burj Khalifa or <laughs> the hospitality or our yeah. culture generally. But when you have to make these selections of who you choose and when you choose them based on the social calendar that we have annually, what do you look for? So Mohammed obviously touched upon some of those elements as well, right? But the propensity to travel and the propensity to experience. I mean, we're talking about destination Dubai. We're not talking about the superlatives of the things that Dubai has. We're talking about the things that Dubai has that can make you feel something, that can make you want to inspire someone else at the end of the day. That's how we actually base a selection. So at the end of the day, if we look at a frame, and we and, and, and we do this day in, day out, right? Uh, if we look at a frame and we just see a pretty face um, that's pouting, that's great. I want to spend um, more time with right. <laughs> <laughs> We would love to. We, all, all, we would love to have you come back again yeah. in the next sessions but, for sure. Yeah, but 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 it's not it's not just us as Dubai mm-hmm. tourism. It's everybody else for that matter, right? I mean, if you're selling a makeup product, absolutely go ahead, do not the pouts, even. right? Yeah, not even, not even, right? But speaking. but maybe, but depending on what your objectives are, and our objective is obviously showcasing what the destination has to offer and what it can make you feel. Based on that, we do the pre-selection. I have one last question for you. And I know we're like rushing you guys because we're about to be kicked out. Of this <laughs> uh, My Dubai, the hashtag My Dubai is a perfect example of how an organic hashtag yes. uh, has introduced Dubai in the most beautiful way, yes, yeah. sometimes misused, like <laughs> the incident we spoke about, yeah. to the world. Yeah. And His Highness, the Crown Prince, is... The one of the real influential uh, leaders, yes. young leaders, yeah. where most people in the Arab world, young teens, look up to him. Yes. Can you tell us how do you, you personally today, through Dubai Tourism, work on strategizing this hashtag okay. and taking it yet to another level? How many... How many millions is it now? Six. The, the use. Well, the usage of the hashtag is 
over 26 million. Yes. 26, mi 26 and how million. And how many years? Um, we're turning five years old in January. How inshallah. are you looking yeah. to, you know, to Well, first we have to thank His Highness, the Crown Prince. I mean, Sheikh Hamdan did such a phenomenal job just basically harnessing the power of conversation and creating organic content. Organic. Very organic, right? Exactly, it, conversation. My Dubai is literally telling people it's by the people for the people, yeah. right? The, the the strategy is there is no actual strategy. It's just redirecting the messaging. So if we want to, you know, maybe upscale the theme parks that we have in Dubai, we'll typically obviously have more people talk about the theme parks because that's the big and trendy thing here, right? We're not used to theme parks. I mean, unless you've been traveling to Orlando and Paris and so on and so forth. Yeah. But, you know, if we want to upscale, for example, Dubai Frame, which is another iconic building in Dubai, will obviously redirect. So the, the, your My Dubai is what you make it to be. You can propose to someone under the iconic skyline, or you can dine under the stars in the desert. Look, spoken it's like your... a true... true like, 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 She's I'm going to... The city that I I'm going to love, to and I've been living here for 14 years, and you are an Emirati native, and yeah, I'm yeah. like... Yes, I'm mesmerized. Tell me more. Right. <laughs> but let's not get out of context here because I feel like the reason both of you are here today, and thank you again for making the time to attend thank on this post us. podcast, for us. Um, is the influencer. Yeah. You know, why have we not seen a regional influ influencer represented represented by yeah. Dubai Tourism Authority? Yet? We we have had some. Um, um, influencers from the region. Obviously, uh, there have been uptakes of different types of variations. But I think, in general, this region is still very new in terms of communications, content creation. I mean, if you think about it, a lot of the other markets have basically matured in terms of their usage of content. So even understanding how to, uh, you know, dissect the content, how to dissect the engagement. So all of those things are kind of catching up right now. So whatever, you know, YouTube, for example, is extremely huge in Saudi. Everybody knows that, right? But it came because of a need. Like, there wasn't a lot of content on TV or cinema, so YouTube took a rise. But how and what type of YouTube content, that was not controllable by a lot of people, right? And then obviously you see a rise in Snapchat and you see a rise in Instagram, but now you're starting to see a rise in a lot of other platforms as well, like Google Guides and TripAdvisors becoming more user-friendly as well. So you're going <clears throat> back to from your ordinary influencer with numbers yes. into the actual people that are Specialists in this domain. Absolutely. Be before you uh, walked in, uh, by the way, we did not uh, introduce uh, I, Aida. Aida oh, I, I, I do I need an introduction? <laughs> she doesn't need no introduction. <laughs> doesn't need an introduction. <laughs> but um, before you walked in, we were discussing the sense of responsibility that you guys share representing Dubai tourism in promoting the real values and the cultures of the city. Yeah. And where do you draw the line when you have to work with international influencers and how difficult it is for you to do so? I might add, please, also, yeah. if you don't mind telling us, how is the selection broken down? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so uh, again, we, we uh, look to, to look at the selection of anything that we do, we have to look at the wider Dubai tourism mandate, right? Our goal is to attract 20 million visitors by 2020. It's been defined. The next That's goal, the goal, that is a goal. The next goal that has been previously defined in the mm. last month or so is basically 23 to 25 million visitors by 2025. Based wow. on that goal, we actually have raw data of the types of people that come and from what countries. We would love to see that, actually. If you don't it's mind all on sharing. our website. Please go to visitdubai.com. Everything is there. Advertising Dubai tourism. <laughs> no, it's I a want, city. I We're want in Dubai today. No, 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 no but definitely, if, if you want, if you want, yeah, if you want, if you want any of the data, it's readily available, right? But the point I'm trying to make is, we don't go out and say, oh, hey, this person has 10 million visitors. We want to fly them into Dubai. We look at the propensity to travel. So we look at the top. 10 cities and the top 20 source markets that basically we, we typically see visitors from. That's our actual core market. Our core market is not to publicize influencers. It's to publicize Dubai to that specific so market through a group of people that can actually prove yes. statistics. That Everything is data. Everything is analyzed is helping and, and the generates economy data. of the city. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, have you had any dangers or like mishaps or, you know, incidents that you have learned from? From, let's say, a bad influencer. Um, I don't think there's I any such thing as a <laughs> yesterday that died off of, 
off a cliff while uh, cliff while taking a selfie. Oh, that oh, didn't I, happen in Dubai, but <laughs> no, no, I, no. I, we we haven't had an incident of a bad influence. I think the definition of bad and good is 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 quite varied depending on who you are. At the end of the day, like I said, everything we do is basically data generated, analyzed, and then data created. So we're very careful. We share our guidelines. We abide by the law, obviously, like every other government entity. At the end of the day, so you know, typically we obviously work on risk management. So yes. before we do anything, exactly, and that's what I've been saying that's, earlier in yes, our conversations. Yeah. What are the main uh, periods of the year uh, where you try or always to- on? Oh, yeah. so <laughs> always on twenty four seven. Yeah, because the travel trends of someone f- from India. Is different from someone from the UK. It depends on your holiday season. I was just giving mm-hmm. the Diwali example. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mohammed, can you share with me like what you're working on? Are we going to see you select uh, regional influencers yes, and regional cross influencers. bridge between you know East and West? And who so, do you have as candidates? Me and Diala are ready. <laughs> we I would love to have you guys. <laughs> we would love to have you guys because I think you guys are great examples of of the people of Dubai. Uh, well, let you. me tell you about one of the projects that we, we've been working on recently. So what we're trying to do is we get not just local Emirati influencers, but also resident influencers who are in Dubai, and we join them with someone who is coming from outside. So that, like, what what better way to tell someone about a city than Insiders. an advocate or so a Dubaian or an Emirati? And you're building so a relationship. Yes. There. And yeah. then and then you want you know like the issues that you were mentioning earlier, like you know, of uh, people just don't know because they, they they're coming into a different. Culture. But it's our responsibility now to educate these people, and Absolutely. we're so glad that you're here today yes. with us on this yep. platform. Yep. So through this program, we aim to really join the incoming influencer from abroad with the resident or Emirati influencer that lives here, and they get to spend a day together. They get to like show them around, and I think that you're is also out your ideas for free. Well, well, that's uh, <laughs> well. I, I, that is an amazing exchange yeah, of absolutely. culture and information, and I really you believe social that. media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you think about it, if you think about this, it, we're actually beautiful. building, building, building on people's knowledge and building mm. on on people's understanding of what compelling and repetitive and actually relevant content means. Mm. Which yeah. makes me really proud to see that our government sector here, such as Dubai Tourism, is actually bridging cultures between influencers. Uh, in the region to give back to the community. So we're learning from two different types of yeah. worlds. Um, yeah. This is very, very, this is like music to my heart One right now. <laughs> One um, last question. One last question I'm going to How much are you going to pay me for the question? <laughs> are you should working? I post it? <laughs> Paid per post. No? <laughs> are you working with other ministries, governmental entities? Yeah, there's, al- there's, al- there's always synergies. I mean, okay. where, we, where we see uh, opportunities, mm-hmm. we'll definitely um, jump on those opportunities. I mean, obviously for, for markets like China, where mm-hmm. a lot of it is, is, is you know, um, very heavy laden in terms of big data type of companies yes. like Tencent, etc. then yes, there are obviously very high level MOUs that are done there, but there's also activations that are done there. So okay. locally as well as globally. Okay. And one of the most recent ones, Dubai Fitness Challenge, if you're not doing it, get on it. 30, 30 days, by 30. 30 by 30. <laughs> I did. I stopped halfway through. We got sick. I got tendonitis. We're not, we're not, we're not, <laughs> I'm a real fashion journalist that actually <laughs> We're not even halfway through the festival. The next... When did you stop? Wait, where did you stop halfway? I was running between f- backstages. I think I did... <laughs> I think I did yeah. my share of running. So we work Less very season. closely with Dubai Sports Council on that. Yes, so yeah. and many and many other government entities <laughs> as well. Well, yeah. we're very lifestyle driven here at yeah. Harper's Bazaar, and of course, our focus is, is beauty yeah. and fashion and well, health and yoga and eating healthy is also you know a type what? of lifestyle. And we right? would like to constantly have <laughs> you as content. guests. Thank you. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, amazing, we're going to have to wrap up because Not our time is due, and I would like to say, from my opinion. Could, would you please join us again in the future? Inshallah, we definitely See, I was <laughs> really sick, and he is really sick. Too, by the way. Oh, yeah. I, I, I just, I just put on my lip gloss in my car. That you brought to the <laughs> room. We need to wrap up. We need to wrap up. So thank you again, Aida and Mohammed, for joining us. If you have any extra notes that you would like to say thank to our you. listeners today, based on the movement and how you would like to take it within the region um, and be an example in terms of what your principles are or your guidelines are as and responsibilities yes. that need to be addressed to our, our day and age influencer. I think the most important thing for anyone who is consuming uh, any sort of content from social media is to be aware. Consuming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you're, you're really consuming. That, that scrolling that you're doing, that is consuming media. Yeah. And when you're doing that, be aware and be respectful. When you're posting things, be respectful. Be respectful mm-hmm. to your neighbor. Be respectful to the people around you. And if we have that level of respect set, then we will have no issues. 
It's yeah, really it when with those, you personally first. Of course, Definitely. with every person, with every person who is either posting or viewing content, be aware and yeah. be respectful. Or raising awareness if people don't Give understand. back to society. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. What? I mean, it's, you know, just jumping on the same bandwagon as well. It's, it's basically responsible content creation based on authentic research. That's the Thank only thing I would so add. Much. Thank, <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Couldn't have ended it any better. <laughs> Thank you for Thank this you beautiful so ending. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for being with it's us today. Thank, Thank you so much. Thanks, Thank you so much, Aida and Hamad. Thank this, you. This basically, I'd like to say thank you to our guests again. And Diala, thank you very much for joining me on our second thank episode. You for Next me. week, we will be recording our third episode. We hope you enjoyed the podcast today. And until next time, this is currently trending. I am Mohammed Al Habtour. And thank you very much. And I'm Diala Maki. <laughs> we love hearing your feedback. So please message us on Instagram or via email. Link in the episode description with your thoughts. Thank you very much for listening and don't forget to check back next week for another episode of Currently Trending. In the meantime, don't forget to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Anchor and Google Podcasts.